with Machikari and you want to know how you can support the channel go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you to be notified every time a new video gets downloaded and welcome everyone to Motorcycle Madhouse I'm James Hollywood Machikari and today we got a good interesting subject coming up it has to deal with Harley Davidson and the title is is it time to panic for Harley Davidson but first I want to give a shout out to uh, one of Insane Throttle and Motorcycle Madhouse's sponsors, Arcane Rebel Apparel. Yep, they're the one who sent me this hat and the shirt in the background. I have to show that off, man. These guys do some beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff. So don't forget to uh, visit our sponsor, Arcane Rebel uh, Apparel, and uh, give them a look, give them a like, and all that good stuff. And uh, support those who support the biker community. Like I said, they have awesome uh, stuff, man. These shirts you guys sent over and the hats are awesome. I love these snapbacks. Everybody knows that. But uh, anyway, let's get uh, going today in this show. We are going to talk about Harley Davidson. And it ain't looking too good right now, fellas and chicks. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to read this article, and this is from The Motley Fool. And, you know, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was this bad. Uh, let's start out uh, again. Let's go over this article. Harley Davidson may be in panic mode as the end of the year looms. Analysts at a research firm, UBS, says their channel checks show the decline in motorcycle sales is accelerating. Those analysts are forecasting a double-digit drop for the full year. And already, because the fourth quarter is typically the slowest period for the bike maker and sales are already in a tailspin, it becomes a question of just how bad the decline will be. And now, the international market troubles. Now, Harley-Davidson was banking on international sales to keep it uh, going up there strong with sales, keeping its stock prices up. And you notice I said, stock prices, you know, because that's what the company's always worried about. But let's go to the international market it talks about. Harley has made it clear that growth in foreign markets is where it's placing its bets on future growth. Now, you notice it ain't saying future growth in the United States because they done gave up on the United States. You know, yeah, it's true. They own half of the big uh, bike market here in the United States. And you notice I said big bike market. This is that's only one segment of the market here in the United States. There's the lower CC market and all that stuff where they are getting blown freaking away. Uh, many of the new smaller motorcycles it will be releasing in the next few years will be for the Indian market, meaning India, guys. Harley cites data showing sales of motorcycles with engine displacements and get this, uh, between 250 uh, cc's and 500 cc's will grow at a compounded rate at 25% annually between 17 and 2020. And it plans to introduce their, their a motorcycle that size bracket within the next two years. So you're going to be seeing Harley Davidson's out in India at 250 cc's. But right now, it's feeling the competitive pressure from India's leading motorcycle maker, Royal Enfield. And they also have started setting up shop here in the United States, which introduced two 650cc motorcycles, the Interceptor and the Continental, that are challenging what has been Harley's most popular bike in the market, the Street 750. Harley Davidson has a manufacturing plant in India. Yeah, it has a plant in India that produces the bike for markets outside North America. That's always what they say. It's always outside of North America. Although initial reports indicate sales in the motorcycle were strong, that may have abruptly changed after Royal Enfield released its bikes because it's marking down prices by as much as 15%. See, Royal knows how to run a business here, man. They know when there's competition, you lower them damn prices, you don't raise the damn things through the roof. Uh, it goes on to say that's significant beyond just the amount of the discount because Harley-Davidson hardly ever runs promotions. 
just like I said, preferring instead to protect the brand value and its profit margins by keeping them premium priced. Now, the problem with keeping it premium priced is that they're getting killed here in the used market. They're killing themselves on bikes they already produced that are being uh, resold in the used market. And like I said, with these rubs, and you know, I know I always pick on them, but hey, how can you not pick on them when they go buy a bike for 20 grand? Right at a couple thousand miles, and next thing you know, they're selling it for what? The tenth of the price? Hey, it's a good deal. So, yeah, Harley has a lot to deal with in that used market. Uh, Royal Enfield is also taking Harley on in the U.S. I just uh, talked about that with these motorcycles. Believe in smaller displacement bikes is where manufacturers will find sales. Where, you know what? You gotta kind of agree with that. Because the younger generation ain't into the big baggers, they're not into the glides, they're not into even the soft tails or fat boys, they're into the smaller displacement stuff, uh, like sportsters, hey, sportsters, I love a sportster, man, I, you know what, you can always go in and out of traffic when it comes to a sporty, so I love sporties. Uh, while Hiley does want to sell smaller motorcycles here, it may be a few years before buyers will see them. Uh, I don't know if uh, Harley has a few years right now because they're really, you know, wait till you hear the numbers up in this article. Instead, it's wagering a lot of its prestige on bringing to market a high-performance electric motorcycle. And that could be a tough sale. You're kidding me. They're, you know what? They're betting the farm on this new electric live wire. Yeah, I know you want to get that new generation, but the live wire, I don't think so, man. Not until you can get the freaking mileage up, man. It, it, <sighs> you can only go 60 freaking miles on a charge? Who the hell wants that, man? <laughs> really? I, I don't see it where you can get a zero with the package that you can go 260, 300 miles. So, yeah, I know electric bikes are probably the future of uh, motorcycles, and it pains me to say that. But uh, the try it now when uh, the company's in the shithole, it don't make no sense to me to put all your resources there, man. You got to start going after that smaller bike market here in the United States. Uh, shit, you got Honda that owns that, Yamaha, and you know what? Hate to say it to old timers like, you know, my age and above, but they got some pretty damn good bikes, man. And Harley Davidson has not kept up on the quality of their bikes. You know, I bone Harleys year after year. I usually trade them in after a while. My 01 Fat Boy, I've kept, said, screw that. This is my last Harley because there's just too much alt out there. And trying to uh, use this made in America stuff and trying to keep that age old thing that only buy American. That's out the door because every damn part on a Harley is either from China, Vietnam, or Japan. Yeah, the money comes back here into Milwaukee, but when they get a chance to do something good, they close down the Kansas plant, they start doing this and doing that. The management is all screwed up at Harley Davidson. It really is. Uh, it goes on to say getting expenses under control. Harley's tack for containing the fallout. From fallen sales is by cutting cost. The roadmap said it would be able to reduce costs through automation, continuous improvement, and closing gaps to the best in class benchmarks. Kind of sounds like the AMF days, doesn't it? Exactly what they had to do back then. And it expects to cut or reallocate re uh, some 450 to 550 million by 2022. Though the majority of cuts will come this year and next. Perhaps a portion of that savings will also come from the sale of one or both of Harley-Davidson's corporate jets. <laughs> Certainly an extravagance in what are decidedly lean times for the bike maker. A source relayed to me that Harley was in the process of selling one of its two Bombardier Challenger 300 aircraft as it attempts to save money during the crunch. But the bike maker did not respond to numerous requests for comments. And they don't. They're, you know what? We've done media inquiry after media inquiry with Harley. They just ignore you. They don't want to have nothing to deal with. Uh, a used Challenger 300 can sell for around $10 million each and could fill more than a few gaps in the company's cost-cutting plan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Got to get rid of them corporate jabs. You know that's coming. Uh, lower prices in key markets to fend off challenges from rivals. Now, my question is, is what is the author talking about the key markets from rivals? Are you talking here in the States, Europe, Oz, uh, over in Asia? Which ones are you talking about? Because here in the United States, everybody's been crying and whining about their prices for God knows how long, for the mid-90s, you, you can go back for prices since they went after that business and they're actually paying for that mistake that they did in the mid-90s. Now they're seeing the hurt. Again, it was that freaking uh, plan that they did, if you can say, going after the richer folks, you know, the rubs, you know, mid crisis crap, and they're getting what they paid for, man. They'll buy the bikes, sell them on the used market. Now they got not only Honda, Yamaha, Cow, Suzuki, Royal, Triumph, all them at their throats, but now they got to compete against themselves in the used market. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, let's see here. Investors should be worried that it can't sell its motorcycles and brace for what could be a very ugly quarter. Now, it is really ugly. Those sales are bad. You're looking at a 35% drop over last uh, uh, this quarter from last year alone. It, it's terrible for Harley right now. And I know there's been a lot of doomsayers and, you know, Armageddon stuff, but the numbers don't lie. And for us old timers, and I know we're always going to say, oh, you know, I'm Harley, nah, 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 I'm never going to change, blah, 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 no matter what. But uh, you might want to think for the next generation, Harley, because it's not my generation or older that's going to save your ass. It's these millennials, these younger kids that are going to save the company. So you better start catering to them. And the electric motorcycle, the live wire, I'm sorry to say, ain't the freaking answer. Not now anyway, man. Give it five to ten years before you start putting all your resources in to the electric bike let it freaking evolve a little bit before you go that way because you know yeah the live wire might be good for the inner city like chicago new york la uh miami and that kind of stuff but uh you know outside of that where you got most of your bike buyers because <laughs> let's face it most people in the city they're buying mopeds and all them other kind of crap but uh, yeah, you, you need to get a re good, you know, retool your plan and stuff. This is just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment sections below. Uh, don't forget to uh, pass the word to go ahead and uh, get us out there on uh, YouTube. We're gonna start making a little bigger push on YouTube. I haven't been doing that that much, but now we are gonna start making the push. But. Uh, Everybody, I really appreciate all your support and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to continue on. Everybody's really liking the Motorcycle for Dummies freaking series that I got going. So we're going to keep that series going. And we're going to get live again uh, on the 2nd of January. So got a lot of good stuff uh, coming up. So don't forget to visit our sponsors, Arcane uh, Rebel Apparel. You got, uh, you know... You got Tombstone's uh, uh, apparel company out there, and you know they're doing up a, uh, a sign that you'll see in the back for us. And go visit them, man. You know, Dirty Sam Productions is the company, and it's a veteran's own. And again, visit uh, Arcane Rebel, and they got some damn good products. Let me tell you, man. So with that, uh, I'll catch you guys later.